Well, there are some days that I can do this and man, there's other days I just can't, but it really, really works. And I like to call it soaking or soaking allure, similar to dead sticking, but I call it soaking because there's also some movement to it, bringing it very, very slowly back to you. I was very fortunate when I was growing up in this area or when I was just cutting my teeth as a bass angler to fish with one of our local legends multiple times. And I gotta tell you, he absolutely just took me to town almost every time that we fished together. He caught so many more than I did, and it's because he soaked his lures. And I'll never forget, his favorite setup was a little bitty four inch uh, power worm, uh, chartreuse pumpkin, okay, pumpkin with a little chartreuse tail, I should say. And he fished it on a Charlie Brewer slider head. That's what he used almost all the time. And he would fish that thing so deliberately and so slow, I'd almost have to go up to him and tap on his shoulder and be like, hey, is everything okay? Are you all right? He almost looked like a statue, but man, did he catch fish and I learned so much from him. Now, if you're going to apply the soaking process, okay, and try to catch just a ton of fish that are coming up and looking at it, and now mind you, this isn't necessarily an aggressive bite. This is when things are a little bit tougher, which is a lot of the time. You need to really have narrowed down your area to what is more high percentage. This is not a searching technique. Okay, you're not going to a new body of water and then just soak this lure and just cover hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards. <laughs> not gonna happen. So start off by looking for something of three. I've talked about this before, intersecting three. Something that intersects, okay, three things. Now you're probably in a fairly high percentage area and this is where the soaking technique can really, really pay off for you. And then lastly is really make sure that you're soaking something, okay, using a lure or presentation you have a lot of confidence in. Maybe that's a shaky head, maybe it's a Ned rig, maybe it's a Nico rig, whatever it could be. But if you're gonna really be deliberate and fish as slow as you can possibly fish, you want to have confidence in the lure that you're using. This isn't a time to just try something randomly out of the blue that maybe you've never used before because odds are you'll give up on it quick. So use something that you're confident in and fish slower than you ever have. Think about your wrist movement, okay? If we move our wrist this much, how much is that rod tip moving? So an inch down here could be, you know, a couple feet up there. So really be aware of that as you're fishing and the other thing that we need to be focused on is that bite line watch look for the smallest twitch does something feel different because when you fish this slowly you're not always going to feel that intense thump because the bass come right up to it can really get a good look at it and often flare their gills and inhale it so they may not always you know whack it and then run off with it so be really aware of that and hey, an important part of fishing this way is line visibility. So if you'd like to watch a video on a line visibility test that I did between sunlight and shady conditions, go ahead and check this one out right here. And make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.